Thomas Jefferson and George Washington smoke weed, guys. I mean, thank you for watching these videos, liking, subscribing, and commenting below. It helps out with the Google algo and sends us out. Seven threes done. My man Don saying the seven threes coming back. Get new window motors. First cold day of the year, and boom, window motor didn't want to work. Changed both of them out because it's got, you know, you got to be like that. So. You guys ever notice the, the arrow in FedEx? If you didn't, you'll notice it now. There's an arrow in, in Federal Express. Anyway, uh, had the opportunity to talk to my buddy Chris Taylor, Financial Fitness, last evening on Zoom. We posted it to the channel. I'll link to the video. It was an hour-long conversation on where do we go from here. We were talking about the current American fourth turning, which is this period of history that we're living through, the 2020s, what's gonna happen from here. It's clear, it's obvious that we live in a declining empire. We can't win foreign wars. We can't get supply chains working. Our political elites have lost touch. The currency is inflating. The people are woke, fake, and gay. And so, where do we go from here? And I think it's hilarious that people seem to think that the idea, myself included, I had to be red-pilled on this recently, that they seem to think that the story of history is the 99% versus the 1% when things get bad. And, and the reality is that's never happened. That's never, ever happened. The reality is it's the 5% versus the 1% when things get bad. And so your five percenters are your, probably your millionaires, possibly your multimillionaires, but certainly probably millionaires would, would get you in that category. Um, and your one percenters are your deck of millionaires, billionaires, etc. cetera. Um, so you've got your one percenters, you've got your five percenters. And at some point in time, as things continue to decline, the five percenters will be like, hey, you know, life was pretty decent as an average everyday millionaire, meaning you got to pay for a house, pay for cars, you got a little plumbing business, two, three vans, the guy's a millionaire. Uh, life was pretty decent, but now at this point in time, I'm looking around, there's lots of crime, homelessness, etc., etc. Like, what gives? And what happened there is the one percent just got. I don't want to use the word greed because it's really not it. It's more about power and more about accumulation and control. But the 1% got a money, their hands on a money printer. They created the system. They made the system work for them. The 5% were able to navigate the system and do okay. But the 95% ultimately got decimated. And we're in the process of seeing the destruction of the middle class. A lot of people driving around right now, they think they're middle class. Wait until the stock market dumps. And when the stock market dumps and we go into a deflationary death spiral and the political elites come out and they're going to print, 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 you're going to notice you're going to have the haves and the have nots. Here comes FedEx. So it'd be the haves and the have nots. And, and at that point in time, it's likely not, it's a probability that the 5% will go, we got to do something about these one percenters. But the story of history is not the 1% going against the 99%. A lot of people seem to think that the American Revolution or any period in history was about the 99% ganging up on the 1% when times got bad. No. It was about the founding fathers who were all super wealthy individuals. Super wealthy individuals. Very wealthy individuals. Uh, essentially going, you know, the, the king is, is requiring 6% on tea. And uh, we just can't be paying a 6% tax on tea. Uh, we got to have to cut them out. We had to cut them out of the deal. And so what they did is they had uh, land speculations in the Ohio River Valley. And they thought, well, hey, if we get rid of the king, one, we don't have to share the gains of this new territory with the king. We don't have to pay taxes back to the king. More for us. Also, you know, we're going to be the new government. And they were. Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, uh, you could argue George Washington. And these are all 1% dudes, 5% dudes. Uh, that or you know that it's a tight group of elites that essentially were, became the counter elite, and it did work out well for the ninety five percent. It was an increase in freedom. It didn't work well in the seventeen eighties. Pretty gory piece of history because if you were a Tory, uh, meaning you were a British loyalist, which the majority of people were, because you know think about a bunch of like elites get around. And they're like, I got an idea. Let's get the peasant boys out there with some rifles. Okay, one shot rifles, you kind of pop, pack it, rip it with your teeth, pack it, shoot, you know, hide in the woods, make another one, pack, shoot. Right, let's get the farm boys out there shooting against the number one military in the 
world, but has all the resources, all the cannons, all the horses. Uh, they got supply chains from back home to keep shipping in goods. They can fight a war forever. I mean, almost, right? And uh, and let's just try this out. And let's cut them in on a better deal. You guys are going to get so much land if we win this event, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the majority of Americans were like, yo, I don't want nothing to do with going against my own government. I mean, imagine at this point in time, if I said, hey, I got an idea, we're going against the U.S. government. You'd be like, yeah, trap, come on, man. But I said, yeah, but me and my 5% buddies are all on board. You know, I got the counter elite. You normally have to have a few 1%ers to come in. So let's just say Trump's on board, right? So, hey, we got Donnie. Donnie's on board, right? Mr. Donald, he's he's on board. So he's going to be out helping us push the event. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to do this. The majority of Americans would be like, no, I want nothing to do with this. Because at the time, the U.S. government would be like, let me tell you what we're going to do to these revolutionists. When we're done whipping their ass, anyone who supported these people, we're going to whoop their ass. You know, the Trump family included, etc. So they, they put themselves, theoretically, all theoretically, they put themselves in a position where it's a win or, or die moment. That's what the revolutionists did. At the time, it was referred to as a civil war. It wasn't a revolutionary war because it was civil. It was the British fighting the British colonists. So it was a civil war. So essentially what, what occurs there, or what, what occurs is you've got 20% of the population supporting this effort. And then 3 to 5% of the, of, of the population actually fighting in the effort. And then they win. And then what happens to the majority, the Tories that supported the former government? Well, it's time to round them up, baby. That's what happens. And so the 1780s is littered with families off going to church and all of a sudden just gets nicked, right? Or, you know, this guy gets tarred and feathered. It wasn't a joke. You breathe through your skin layer. You tar someone. One, they got first degree burns all through their body. Two, they can't breathe. And three, they normally die of infection or something like that later on. So it's a terrible way to go. But essentially what they did in the 1780s is they just found everybody and they hunted them. It's a pretty nasty period of history. And a lot of people think, well, George Washington's our first president and they want to make him king and all. And it's like, no, 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 that's, what you, that's your fake gay education. That's, that's your government indoctrination camps. What really happened was the first president of the United States is John Hansen. And he's the first president, but there's so much crazy going on. The whole the society's so lawless. Everyone's settling scores. There's so much poverty and death and disease that they bring in their Chad military dictator to just fix it. They're like George Washington, like just do whatever you got to do. And he brings in his boys, his his you know they call them his marine units, you know his, his best units, and they get the place in order. And no one really talks about what they did to do that, but he brought law and order to the land, allowed the Continental Congress and others to form up the Constitution and figure things out, and by the 1790s, things get ironed out pretty good, and he leaves to go grow hemp marijuana up at his Mount Vernon property, uh, where him and Thomas Jefferson are some of the first people on record to isolate the male and female seeds and try to clone plants and start and, and actually try to increase the potency of the THC. Now they used it to make rope and they used it for clothing and hemp is just a really good crop and it made sense. And when you're a poorer nation just starting out, you're going to grow what works and hemp, nothing grows more effectively than hemp. Uh, but... Uh, they're the first people that literally are around, you know, they get this stuff from the Indians, but they're the first people that like really turn this into a true um, drug, if you will. I mean, there was obviously a drug before that to plants and herb, but you know, Thomas, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington smoke weed, guys. That's what they didn't tell you. Like they smoke weed. It is what it is. Uh, but but your education up to this point is all America's the good guys. You know we had this. We had to beat the British. They were the bad guys. Taxes were outrageous. They were six percent on tea. It was that outrageous? It was just that the five percent said no. We can't deal with the one percent. What's likely to happen is not that the peasants are going to go out there with their least financed cars and trucks, their mortgages on their property, no ability to have their own uh, sovereignty over their own food supply, no actual metals or cryptos or anything that like is an actual store of value, and they're just going to go out there with their AR-15s and just fuck shit up. Like, that, that's not gonna happen. They're too fucking poor. They can't afford to do that. You know who can do that? The 5%. The five percenters who go, you know what? I live amongst other five percenters. We can actually hold back the Imperial Guard. You know, we have one percent friends. I mean, we know a few guys, you know, they can fund us. Like that's what's really gonna happen. And then what will what will happen is you'll cut your peasants in on a better deal. 
hey guys, it sucks to be a peasant. They locked the banks, they got Fed coin, you gotta get a jab every month to stay current, to be able to spend, spend your palm reader and stuff. I know all that sounds crazy now, but in these videos in a few years, if they're still around, they will be on my own websites. They, they won't be that crazy then. Right now they're like crazy, but no one cares. No one's standing up for liberty. So what's going to happen is as they continue to smash liberty down, the five percenters may get restless. And if you see a Caesar-like character who comes down from the one percent to lead the five percent, offers them a better deal in exchange for winning because they become the counter elite, well then they extend that to the peasantry and the peasantry gets a better deal. And then it becomes the five percent with the 95 percent that are really kind of banging out on the one percent. And at that point in time, you get French Revolution stuff, you get the people of the gallows, you find these people like the Dr. Fowler out there. You find these individuals and things get nasty. But this is global. This is a global problem in nature. And so you've got to understand that this is not just an American issue. This is happening all over the entire globe. Everyone's looking to America to do what we have always done, which is when shit has gotten bad, we have fucked shit up historically. But you look around this culture, it's pretty woke, fake, and gay. And so you gotta, you know, if you're in Australia, don't count on us right now. Don't count on us. So no one really knows what's going to occur, but what we do know is that we're gonna see the demise of fiat currencies. And at that point in time, it's anybody's guess. Thank you for watching these videos, liking, subscribing, and commenting below. It helps out with the Google algo and sends us out. And I super appreciate you guys being here. So until next time, 